Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Bierman here, and this is Earth Day week. We will celebrate Earth Day this Wednesday, and one of my most very favorite stories to read for Earth Day for my younger kids, my pre-K and kindergarten kids, is a book called Miss Rumpheus. And the story, I will I'll put a link to a read aloud to Miss Rumpheus. Um, I don't have the book here at my house, um, but the story is about how you and all of us can make the world a more beautiful place. And Miss Rumpheus does that by planting these beautiful flowers called lupines. Um, so in our normal classrooms, we talk about these flowers and we do a, a process to create this art. And I'm going to give you a few different options today. So what we usually do in class is we look at the color wheel and we choose three or four neighbor colors on the color wheel. That has a very big word called analogous colors, but we don't talk too much about the big word. We just talk about colors that are friendly with each other, colors that are close to each other on the color wheel. So you will choose a set of colors um, that are neighbor colors for your background. Um, I'm going to choose yellow, orange, red, and I'm going to actually use a little bit of red violet also. So I'll show you what we're going to do with those crayons and we'll go from there. So on my piece of paper, the first thing that we start with is the sunshine. So you can pick anywhere on your paper to create a sun. I'm going to take my crayons here. Uh, my crayons I have peeled and I'm going to use those in a different way in just a minute. But first I'm creating my sunshine. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a second color just to add a little bit of shading to my sunshine there. And once I have my sun on my paper, this is when I'm going to take my neighbor colors and get started. So with my neighbor colors, I've peeled the crayons. I had a bunch of old crayons in my house. I soaked them in water for a couple minutes and the, and the peel, the paper came right off. But I'm going to use those crayons on their sides and I'm going to push it, like I'm pushing a bulldozer and I'm going to push that color right onto my paper. After I have my first color down, I'm going to choose another neighbor color and I'm going to overlap a little bit, fill up some more space on my paper. I can go right over top of my sun or I can go around my sun if I need to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my third color, which is red. And again, my table's not super flat, so I'm getting a, a little bit of a weird texture here, but that's okay. Um, it's kind of fun to overlap and layer these colors. Because they are neighbor colors, they will work well together. I'm gonna take my red violet last. You don't have to do them in order. If you've chosen neighbor colors, analogous colors, they should all blend pretty well. And I can go over all of those together. So I have a beautiful background. I'm not sure how well you can see that, um, but I have a beautiful background there. And then my next step, and if you've watched the video or if you've read the book or looked at the pictures, um, you'll see what lupines look like. So my next step is to add about four stems, maybe five stems. And I'm going to do stems of different sizes and heights so that my paper is a little bit more interesting. So once I have those stems there, I am ready to add paint. Now in art class, it's much easier to add paint and I don't know what kind of paints you have at home. So I am gonna show you, oops, I am gonna show you another option after this. Lupines can be blue, pink, purple, um, really any color, but I'm going to start with I think purple Maybe I'll do a little bit of blue. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the color that I want to use. And I'm going to also dip it in white at the same time. And when I do this, I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to just press my paintbrush lightly while I'm at the top of the paper. And as I get lower and lower, I'm going to push a little bit harder and harder and those flowers are going to turn into bigger shapes, or the petals, I should say, because I'm pressing harder down my paper. 
Okay. Now, again, I'm using the other set of opposite or neighbor, I'm sorry, I'm using the other set of neighbor colors. So now I'm going to be using blues, purples, and pinks here. So I really don't have to wash my brush. Those colors will all mix pretty nicely together. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush in some bluish turquoise and some white again. And I'm going to start pressing gently at the top. And you'll see as I press harder, I'm actually seeing a little bit of purple peek through, but I'm pressing harder and harder towards the bottom. So I have bigger petals and it kind of forms a cone shape once I get towards the top. Now I could wash my brush off at this point, but we're gonna see what the pink does without washing my brush. I'm take some pink and some white again. There's actually a little blue on my paintbrush and start at the top, little flowers at the top and getting bigger as I go down. So as I'm pressing, I'm trying to press the metal part of my paintbrush, I'm trying to touch the metal part of my paintbrush to the actual stem of my flower. And that way it kind of fans out as I press. I'm gonna grab some dark blue and I'll do my last one up here. See if we can get any other colors peeking through. I didn't dip it into the white this time. But maybe I will. I got some blue, got some white. And when we do this, if I don't wash my brush. I just love to see the different colors that I end up with on my paper. So there's the first way to do it. This is how we generally do it at school. We work with the, the crayon background and we add the paint on top. But I know some of you don't have paints at home um, and that's something we can work with. So if you would like to, if you don't have paints, you can just use the crayons on a white piece of paper. You can do your sun the same way, add your stems. And this time, instead of painting my flowers on there, I have just... Um, added little circles of color. So in the same types of colors there for my lupines, I have taken just crayons and created those kind of um, circular oval shapes, um, starting kind of large at the bottom. Or you can start at the top, but I'm, I'm working larger at the bottom. My ovals are kind of slanting upwards and I am pressing rather hard so that my lupines are what really stand out on the paper. So I'm going all the way up, adding those circular shapes. If you wanna get fancy, you can add more than one color in them that'll look a little bit like shading. That's totally up to you. When you're done with that, you have a couple options. Option number one is to take your peeled crayons and just create the sunset behind your lupines, um, depending on what neighbor colors you choose. I don't know how well you'll be able to see your lupines, but if you've pressed nice and hard and you happen to have watercolor paints at home, another option is, of course, watercolor paints. So if you want to choose a different set of neighbor colors, you can do that. I'm going to, hi Everly. Would you like to be part of the video? No? Okay. So I'm going to take some blues. And you don't have to be super careful because my crayons are made out of wax, out of oil. So I can go over top of my crayons and it should repel. It should pop off a little bit. I use some of those warm color crayons down here at the bottom. So I'm kind of seeing those pop through as well. But you can go ahead and use watercolor paints. Um, some of you learned how to turn markers into watercolors on one of my previous videos, so you could always do that. Um, but have fun filling up your paper. And the most important part about creating is just kind of relaxing and having fun, just making some sort of creation and making this world a more beautiful place like Miss Rumpheus teaches us in the story. So enjoy making your lupines, whether you're painting them, whether you're using crayons and watercolor, 
You can do whatever you'd like to. And I think your teachers are also going to include a video on how to make some Earth Day necklaces if you're interested. So enjoy the week and enjoy. And you don't have to do Earth. No, I made Earth Day necklaces, but you could paint them however you would like to. Remember to celebrate Earth Day this week in some way and with help apple. make this world a more beautiful and with place. Apple. Okay, bye everybody.